He dropped 51 points against the Hornets. He became the oldest player in NBA history to score at least 40 points in a game. He hit a game winner to beat the Knicks in Madison Square Garden. I'm not talking about MJ in Chicago. I'm talking about MJ in Washington because you kids just don't know how good Michael Jordan was with the Wizards. I hear it all the time. He tarnished his legacy. He ruined the perfect storybook ending. Jordan never should have unretired again and played for the Wizards. Stop it. I know Michael Jordan wasn't the best player on the planet anymore when he was in Washington, but this notion that he put a blemish on his career over his last two years in Washington is one of the biggest misconceptions in all of basketball. Here's why. Number one, Jordan's stats in Washington were legit. Legitimate all-star, all-NBA type numbers. In his first season with the Wizards, 2001-2002, he averaged more than 22 points, more than five rebounds, and more than five assists a game, plus one and a half steals. His second season, 428 players took the floor that year. Of those 428, only 11 averaged at least 20 points, six rebounds, and three and a half assists a game. Michael Jordan was one of them. One of 11. At age 40, he also had nine games in which he scored 30 or more points. That's more than Chris Webber, more than Gary Payton, more than Vince Carter. He also dropped 40 or more three times more than Dirk Nowitzki and Ray Allen that year. So at the age of 40, Jordan was outperforming Hall of Famers and perennial all-stars who were in their primes. In fact, in his two seasons in Washington, Jordan had eight games in which he scored 40 or more points while shooting at least 50% from the field. To put that in perspective, Hall of Famer Chris Mullen had seven such games in his career, Hall of Famers Reggie Miller and Mitch Richmond had nine such games. In their careers, two of the best swing men in the league today, Kawhi Leonard has six and Jimmy Butler has five. In their careers. Number two, Jordan put together several spectacular and clutch moments for the Wizards. Let's go back to December 22nd, 2001. The game is tied at 83. There's eight seconds left. Jordan gets the ball at the top of the key, takes three dribbles against Latrell Sprewell, rises up and sinks a mid-range jumper for the win. Or how about a week later when he put 51 points on the Hornets? And the next game against the New Jersey Nets, he goes for 45 10 and 7 in a blowout win over the eventual Eastern Conference champions. Don't forget January 31st, 2002. Wizards Cavs. Call it the shot part two. 1.6 seconds left. Wizards down by one. Popeye Jones inbounds to Jordan. He eludes Andre Miller and hits the game winner at the buzzer. Of course, there was March 9th, 2003, Jordan's last game at Madison Square Garden. What does a 40-year-old MJ do? Only puts 39 and eight on the Knicks. But let's talk about that year's All-Star game, 2003. Obviously, the best players in the world are on the court, including Michael Jordan, who wasn't an All-Star because his name was Michael Jordan. He was an All-Star because even at that age, he deserved to be it based on his play. So anyway, it's overtime. The game is tied at 136. Jordan gets the ball on the baseline against Sean Marion, who at that time was one of the longest, rangiest, most athletic, and best defenders in the NBA. Jordan goes to his patented turnaround fadeaway jump shot and sinks it over the outstretched arms of Sean Marion. It should have been. It would have been, it could have been the highlight of Jordan's tenure with the Wizards. But 
Jermaine O'Neal commits a silly, ridiculous foul with a second left to play that allows the West to tie the game and go on to win in double overtime. And finally, number three. Contrary to popular opinion, the Wizards actually improved a great deal with Jordan on the court. The year before he joined the Wizards, they won 19 games. That was third worst in the NBA. Jordan's first season with the team, he was limited to 60 games because of a knee injury, but they went 30 and 30 in those games. And lastly, let me leave you with this. In 2001, 2002, Tim Duncan, one of the greatest players of all time, was the league MVP. In January of that season, Duncan played 16 games, averaging 24.8 points for the month. Jordan, fresh off his second retirement, approaching the age of 40, played 13 games that month and averaged 26.8 points for January. There you have it, Jordan, old, ancient, not half as athletic as he was in Chicago, putting up more points for the month than the MVP. Now you kids know how good Michael Jordan was with the Wizards. For the best access, perspective, and personalities in all of sports, follow us at Fox Sports on Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, and YouTube.